Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to upgrade the memory in a mid-2017 21.5 inch iMac. This is a rather involved process requiring you to disassemble much of your iMac. It's recommended that you watch this video in its entirety before attempting this installation. We've already gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the iMac, and are working on a soft static free surface. We're now ready to begin. The first thing we'll need to do is remove the display. The display on the iMac is held in place with an adhesive around the edges which you'll have to cut apart. This is a tricky process which runs the risk of cracking the display, so you'll need to be very careful. Starting on one of the lower corners, insert the screen removal tool between the glass and the chassis. Work along all the edges of the iMac, taking care not to push out on the glass. All we're doing is cutting the tape holding the display on, not prying the glass away. The process may take a little bit, and you may need to go over sections multiple times, so be patient. The corners may be a little tricky. Make sure the tool is right up against the chassis to make sure all the tape is cut. When near the camera, you may feel some bumps as the tape is thin here. Continue around the iMac until you reach the other side. You may now lay the iMac face up on your work surface and attach the suction cups to the upper corners. Do one last check to make sure you've loosened all the adhesive around the edges of the iMac, then lift the glass part way up using the suction cups. Inside, near the top, you'll need to detach two cables. For the first, simply slide it out of its socket by its tabs. For the second cable, first lift up on the plastic tab to unlock the connector, then slide it out. You can then angle the display the rest of the way up and remove the adhesive holding the bottom of the display. Simply grab the tab on each side of the screen and slowly pull it towards the center until it comes free. Finally, use your opening tool to slit any remaining adhesive along the center edge and you should be able to remove the display and set it aside. We need to get at the back of the main logic board. To do that, we'll first need to remove a number of other pieces, starting with the hard drive. To remove the hard drive, we'll need to detach the retainers held in by these four Torx T10 screws. Once you've removed the retainers, you can lift the drive up from the bay and detach the SATA connector holding it in. The connector can be tight and the cord is short, so it may just be a matter of finding the right angle. You can then set the drive aside. Next, remove the five small Phillips screws along the lower rim of the iMac. The center screw may be hidden underneath the tape near the center. We can now remove the lower support bracket, making it considerably easier to remove the components from the chassis. Next, we're going to remove the power supply. The capacitors on the board can still hold a charge, even when unplugged, so you need to be extremely careful to hold the board by the edges and not touch any of the soldered connections. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the two visible connecting wires going to and from the board. The first wire is near the speaker and goes to the power button on the back. Simply slide it straight out of its socket. The other one is the power supply control cable, which slides out of its socket on the logic board in much the same way. Next, we can remove these two Torx T8 screws. Using just the edges of the board, pull the power supply forward to reveal more cables to disconnect. First, detach the cable leading to the back side of the logic board by squeezing the small tab and sliding the connector out of the socket. 
Finally, we need to disconnect the AC inlet cable, which connects deeper within the iMac. This cable has a tab similar to the one you just attached. Push the small tab down to unlatch it and pull the connector straight out of the socket. You can now set the power supply board aside. Next, we can remove the hard drive bay itself. It's held in place by a single Torx T8 screw. Once the screw is removed, lift the bay up and remove the cables from the tabs underneath. Once the cables are removed, you can set the drive bay aside. Next, we're going to remove the fan. The unit is held in by these three captive Torx T10 screws. The first screw is pretty straightforward. For the second, you may want to remove the small rubber piece on top to make it easier to align your screwdriver. The third is actually located beneath a notch in the logic board. Next, unplug the fan connector from the logic board by simply sliding it out of its slot. You should then be able to lift the fan up and out of the iMac. Now it's time to disconnect any cables from the logic board. Let's start with the three innermost ones. For the camera cable, lift up on the tab to unlock the small handle, then slide the connector out of its socket. Remove the speaker cable by simply sliding it out. Undo this connector by first lifting the latch on the back side of the connector, then sliding the cable out. The next things we'll want to detach are the wireless antenna cables, located near the top of the iMac. First, you'll want to remove the two Torx T5 screws holding the wire retainers in place. You should then be able to gently but firmly lift the antenna connectors from their sockets and tuck the wire safely down and out of the way. There are only two more connections on this side of the logic board that we need to worry about. The headphone jack connector simply lifts up and off of its socket. The last cable to detach is the speaker cable, which slides out of its socket like the other one did. We can now remove the four Torx T8 screws that hold the board in place. The screw nearest the Apple logo will have an anti-tampering label over it. All you need to do is poke the tip of the screwdriver through it and remove it like normal. The other three screws will remove normally. Next, we need to remove the Torx T8 screws attaching the heatsink to the fan grate. Start with these two along the outside. The other two are accessible through these notches along the edge of the logic board. Now that all the screws have been removed, you should be able to lift the logic board up and move it forward out of the iMac slightly. This may take a bit of maneuvering, but it will eventually come out. You should now have enough room to disconnect the SATA data and power cables from the underside of the board. Once you've done that, you can remove the board entirely from the iMac chassis. Looking at the back side of the logic board, you'll find the memory located here. To remove the top module, simply press outward on the retaining clips until it pops up, then slide it out of its slot. Repeat the process for the lower module.
The bottom module has an adhesive thermal pad that will need to be transferred to the new module going in the bottom slot. Carefully peel the pad off the old module and use the remaining adhesive to attach it to the new one in the same orientation. The memory modules have a notch that lines up with the pin in each of the memory slots. Align the two and slide the memory module into the lower slot at an angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge of the module to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. Before replacing the logic board, you'll want to untuck the cables from under their restraining tab in the bottom of the iMac. This will allow them to move freely while you reattach them to the logic board. The two SATA sockets are located near the memory modules you just replaced. Simply slide the connectors into their respective sockets until they lock into place. You may now place the logic board back into the iMac, being careful not to accidentally damage any of the surface mounted components or trap any cables. Again, it may take a little maneuvering to get it to fit into place. Once the board is in place, you can replace the four screws that hold the logic board down. Then you can reattach the screws that hold the heatsink to the fan vent, starting with the two under the logic board, then two towards the outside. You can then reattach the cables, starting with this speaker cable, which just slides into place. The headphone jack connector simply lines up over its socket on the logic board and snaps together. For this cable, you'll need to slide the connector back into its socket. A pair of tweezers may be useful to help it get started. Once the cable's fully seated, you can close the small latch on the other side of the socket. Next are the other speaker and the camera cable. The speaker cable simply slides into place. Then, slide the camera cable into its socket, then lock it into place with the small handle. Finally, we can reattach the antenna cables, which should still be in order. Simply line the connectors up and press them together. Then, secure them in place using the two Torx T5 screws. You can now route the SATA and speaker wires back under their metal tab. Next, we can replace the fan. Set the fan into position and secure it using its three Torx T10 screws. You can then set the rubber piece back on the topmost screw. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. You can then reattach it to the logic board by simply sliding its connector into place. We'll need to reroute the SATA cable through these tabs on the underside of the SATA bay. Simply line the SATA connector up in its position on the drive bay and slide the cable under the tabs. You can then set the bay back into place and secure it with its Torx T8 screw. Next, we can replace the power board. First, slide the power inlet cable into its socket in the chassis until it clicks into place. 
Then, do the same with the cable going to the logic board. You can now maneuver the board into place, being careful not to touch the soldered points on the board. You may also need to push the logic board power cable out of the way underneath so the board can lay flat. Once you have the board in place, you can secure it with the two Torx T8 screws. You can now reattach the power control cable to its socket on the logic board. And finally the power button cable on the other side. To reattach the hard drive, it may be easier to move this speaker unit out of the way so you have more room to work. Loosen the two Torx T10 screws that holds it in. Then lift the speaker unit up and rotate it to the side slightly to reveal the SATA connector. You should now have enough room to attach the SATA connector to the drive. You can now set the drive itself so it lays flat in the bay. You can then set the speaker unit back into place and tighten the screws down again. Place the drive retainer that goes on the speaker side into place, making sure not to pinch the power cable wire, and secure it with the two identical sized screws. Then replace the other retainer. The side near the fan gets the shortest screw, while the remaining screw goes on the power supply side. Next, clean off any remaining adhesive from around the edges of the iMac chassis and from the back of the display. Set the lower support bracket back into place. Then replace the screws using a nylon tool to support the back of it. Now we can set the display tape pieces in place according to the diagram that comes with the kit. You'll know their position correctly if all the holes and cutouts line up correctly with the shape of the iMac chassis. Once you've determined all the pieces of tape have been placed correctly, peel off the backing and adhere them to their places on the iMac. You can then peel off the backing on the other side to expose the adhesive that will attach the display. Set the display along the bottom with the edges flush with the lip and as centered as possible, but don't let it close yet as we need to reconnect the video cables. Reattach the lower cable by sliding the connector into its socket and locking it into place with the handle. Then, simply slide the last connector into its socket. You can now carefully lower the display into place, making sure you have the edges lined up correctly. Gently squeeze along the edges to make sure the adhesive sticks. Then use the microfiber cloth to remove any extra fingerprints. Once you clean any remaining marks off your iMac, you're ready to set it back upright, plug it back in, hook it up, and turn it on.